सहनावत सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर कर्वाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मा विदिषा वह ओ शाति 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 ओं समस्तजनकल्याणे निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गुर ब्रह्म विद्वर ओके सो दिस साइड विल चांट द फर्स्ट वर्स स्टार्ट वन टू थ्री स्टार्ट वेरी गुड वेट 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 सेकेंड वर्स दिस साइड three people are chanting this verse this is on bharat man come on it is not some deity it's on our land loudly all of you <coughs> karma bhumi riyam swargam then apavargam cha gachhatam ओके थर्ड वर्स दिस साइड हिमालय समारभ्य हिमालय समारभ्य ओके नाउ एवरीवन टुगेदर थ्री वर्सेस लाउडली उत्तरम युद्र से हिमाद्रेशिण वर्षम तदारत नाम भारतीय सतति नवयो जन साहस्रो विस्तारो से महामुने कर्म भूमिम स्वर्ग अपवर्गम च गता हिमाल सरभ्य यदिंदु सरोवर तम देवर्मित देश हिंदुस्थान प्रचक्षते सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस सेशन जस्ट अ फ्यू क्वेश्चन हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव अटेंडेड हैव नॉट अटेंडेड अ चिक कैम्प बिफोर okay how many of you have uh, how many of your parents have attended a camp here all right and how many have come to sidbari for the first time okay i should ask ulta question how many have not come to sidbari for the first time Okay, three only, four. You come earlier here, Arya. Okay, good. So, why is this place called Sidbadi? Anyone? Yeah. Lot of sadhus came here. so siddha means somebody who has successfully accomplished one's goal in sanskrit the goal is called sadhya and the one who attains the goal is called siddha lots of spiritual masters have done tapasya are all around here it's a very very powerful place and gurudev used to say be careful what you desire here because what you desire here will come true because your thought sankalpa will get magnified amplified 100 times 200 times by the power of the whole place here the vibrations that are here 
the mahatmas who have studied here stayed here done penance here so that's why this is abode of siddhas siddha means the perfected one the one who has accomplished the goal of life and body means the place so this is the place of great siddhas and amongst many many siddhas there is one great muni called kapil muni in the gita also bhagwan says siddhanam kapilosmi i am the kapil muni amongst the siddhas and there is kapil muni's ashram nearby he used to stay and he used to do penance here he is considered avatar of lord vishnu and he is the one who was born to devahuti and kardam rishi and uh, he is the one who gave the sankhya philosophy so it is a place of such great people in the himalayas you have come so any sankalpa that you have sincerely you wish for it here it will get strengthened and anything difficult you want to accomplish where you feel oh this is too difficult for me I, this is not happening only by my effort then definitely take that sankalpa invoke the grace of gurudev hanuman ji whatever you believe in and you will find lot of strength you will find many things change so this is a place for that so any time of the day if you want to sit quietly anywhere in the samadhi when you have the free time in the schedule you are welcome to do that make the best use of this place not only we are in the himalayas we are in siddhabadi we are near the samadhi of gurudev himself and uh, we are in the presence of bhagwan ram and hanuman ji so great place you have come and today morning you have also done the havan here in the himalayas all these have lot of impact on our mind our personality and i would say many of you are fortunate and good that you made a choice to spend your 5 days in summer in this place here when there is some punya karma you have done some good deeds you have done in this life in the earlier lives then one comes to such places one is able to attend spiritual camps one is able to go through this some things may be challenging to you some things may be not very easy maybe you are not used to a very rigid schedule or a very tight schedule through the day maybe you are not used to heat maybe you are not used to living in non ac environments possibilities are so many satvik food for four days can be overwhelming to some people lots of possibilities are there but in and through all this when you go through you are breaking your comfort zones growth is also happening and if you complete this four days that's again a sign that some punya you have done because not everybody can sustain spiritual on the spiritual path so many people start but very few can sustain many drop out and even in those who sustain very few manage to reach the final goal so the most adventurous journey one can ever take up is spirituality sometimes people feel it is ulta they think all the dejected depressed despondent people who have nothing better to do who are losers in life they take to spirituality so you know many times people ask also swami ji can we ask you a personal question and then we know what is coming and they say did somebody break your heart did you have some loss did somebody you know abandon you why did you take to spirituality all that so like many times people think that way but this is a land which has produced so many young people who are great spiritual giants can you name at least five of them who were your age or even younger than you but did great work in spiritual field and for the country so one example adi shankaracharya ji wonderful vivekanand ji ramana maharshi excellent ramkrishna paramhamsa sant gnaneshwar yes vinoba bhave vinoba bhave quite later right in his life very early ha 
नरसिंह मेहता ओके सॉरी स्वामी चिन्मयानंदा यस ही वेंट एज अ जर्नलिस्ट टू एक्सपोज द साधुस एंड देन ही हिमसेल्फ गॉट ट्रांसफॉर्म एट थर्टी टू ईयर्स ही टूक सन्यास आई नो बट वेन ही वेंट टू एक्सपोज द साधुस ऑलरेडी ही वॉज अ फ्रीडम फाइटर नॉट वेरी यंग देर आर सम पीपल हु आर हियर वेरी फ्यू पीपल हु आर अबाउ थर्टी सो इन दैट सेंस दे आर सेम एज एज गुरुदेव सो लाइक दिस लॉट्स ऑफ दैम इन वीमेन ऑल्सो यू फ्यू सी शारदा देवी जना बाई मुक्ता बाई यू नो सो मेनी ऑफ दैम ग्रेट वीमेन ग्रेट मैन आनंद महिमा सो मेनी दिस इज द लैंड विच हैज प्रोड्यूस्ड यंग पीपल इन स्पिरिचुअल फील्ड सो डोंट थिंक स्पिरिचुअलिटी इज मैंड फॉर द ओल्ड आउटडेटेड और पीपल यू नो लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव स्पिरिचुअलिटी एज अ रिटायरमेंट प्लान पोस्ट रिटायरमेंट वॉट विल यू डू हम सत्संग करेंगे वाई डोंट यू कम टू सत्संग नाउ आई एम वेरी बिजी आई हैव वर्क टू डू आई हैव फैमिली आई हैव सोशल लाइफ आई हैव दिस आई हैव दैट सो वेन डू वी लर्न द आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग वेन वी आर लिविंग लाइफ और वेन वी आर गोइंग टू डाई वेन वी आर लिविंग लाइफ वी नीड टू नो हाउ टू फेस लाइफ सो दैट्स वॉट स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज इज ऑल अबाउट and gurudev always used to say test religion before you reject it don't reject it because of some hearsay lot of people have different opinions we hear from other people then we say no no i am not religious i am spiritual i am not religious from where did our spirituality come can you tell me suppose somebody says i am not religious i am spiritual from where did their spirituality come it came from religion only na faith faith personally yes it may have come through your faith but how does one develop that faith yeah cause and effect faith so what is the cause if faith is an effect what is the cause that is not faith that is belief in logic that logic is cause and effect i mean faith is always in something which is unknown for what is known or what can be perceived there is no need to have faith that is just you can see the result perceptibility does not need faith your faith is you will get a particular result then your faith is in the in that result that you will get that's the faith in that i will get specific result i put in this hard work my faith is that i have done what i need to to get the so faith in yourself is confidence so then that does not need faith that's what i'm saying that is your faith in yourself you are saying it's confidence i have confidence in my strength my capabilities my knowledge is perceptible faith is connected to that which is not perceptible easily that's the important aspect to understand about faith and that's why my question is what is the source of that faith in that which is not perceptible how do you have faith not that faith does not have logic of course faith has logic and reasoning Like 
See, we only say our people only say that I don't, I don't, I am not a religious person. I am a spiritual person. That statement has to be really questioned. It is like saying I read lots of books on swimming, but I don't enter water. It's like that. Spirituality is the principles. Application is the yoga shastra. So we have Brahma Vidya and yoga shastra. Combination of this is religion. Any one without the other is impossible. Philosophy without the rituals is lame, and rituals without philosophy is blind. You need both rituals as well as philosophy. So rituals is what today we are limiting religion to. and we are saying philosophy is spirituality i believe in philosophy i don't believe in ritual but both are necessary and both constitute religion any one cannot constitute religion by itself if both don't are not there properly then that religion will not be able to sustain enough it will crumble so this is one important point to understand and faith comes from if if you have faith in the higher or faith in the scripture or faith in a guru it comes from at least in sanatan dharma we say the spiritual path the religious path helps us to develop that one can come upon it by one's logical reasoning also to certain extent but it will be only be limited to one's own confidence that i can do i can achieve if i need to understand something higher in its true nature then i will need spiritual texts religious texts for that yeah so but why do you have belief in that person for what Uh, so faith in the person you have there that whatever this person says i will accept so that faith is again confidence in that other person that they can do what we help we want to achieve they can help us to achieve they have achieved by themselves so i have confidence in them i can experience this Yeah, that's what he said. Same thing. There. Yeah, faith comes from knowledge. Faith strengthens uh, with knowledge, and slowly that faith will transform into that person's experience. One definition of faith, what Guru Dev gave. Two definitions he gave. Very powerful ones. One he said, faith is belief reinforced with conviction. That is called faith. it is my belief which is reinforced with conviction and that conviction comes from logical reasoning as well as from the experiential proof and as i said this is specifically focused on what is not perceptible so the infinite reality or god or what the scriptures say that happiness is not in the world outside immediately i am not able to perceive but through logical reasoning given by these books by these great people who have applied this their life experiences how it has transformed them then slowly i can put faith in it today if the scripture says you are not the body can we have faith in that think about it my full force of my personality right now is i am this i can achieve what i want because i am this my mind is strong and this is my equipment so i believe fully in this i am not this i am something else that is the unknown what is that unknown consciousness god truth reality whatever you call it that is not known to me and that is not can you show god in a test tube i discovered god pass it on everybody can see not possible is god a feeling feelings change is god a thought god is not a thought because if god is thought then god is perishable 
because every minute we have so many thoughts every second thoughts come thoughts go so there is something else beyond body mind intellect in my own personality we are not even telling you to believe something else out there in my own personality there is something else that makes this body mind intellect function what is that to know that i need to study to know that i need to understand and slowly slowly that belief when it is backed with logical understanding with reasoning with experiential proof then we develop that yes there is that infinite consciousness and still that is my faith because i am not experiencing it immediately with that faith when i start applying then i will come to experience so from non belief to belief to faith to experience knowledge and experience this is our journey i'll repeat again from non belief to belief belief can be shaky belief can you can go back to your beliefs what you were having earlier if you don't find it reasonable you can go back to non belief so from non belief to belief from belief slowly you strengthen and it becomes your faith belief reinforced with conviction is faith that faith when you have that i don't experience it today but scripture says it so it must be true or this person i have faith in it must be true and i am logically backing it up because of these these reasons then that belief has become my faith and based on that faith i start the pursuit of that path i gain more and more knowledge and then it will become my experience so faith to knowledge to experience in the gita it is said shraddhavan labhate gnanam the person who has faith will attain the knowledge and that will be their experience after that so this i am saying specifically in context of religion here when we take took up this discussion about spirituality and religion if we need to understand life as a whole who am i what is this creation what are the laws functioning here who is the creator what is the connection between all these no other science will tell us this in its entirety every science will sp speak about one aspect which is easy to perceive but the substratum behind all these that the science will not tell us and that's why the scripture and spiritual science becomes most important you had a question yeah share no it will not cease to exist then and there the thought of god ceases to exist then and there but god is not a thought please think about that that is for you or that is for some people there are so many people just the examples what we we took and even today there are people who experience this as their intimate experience and in fact all of us experience it even right now god is experienced by us right now god is not some entity sitting up in the heaven in your heart do you feel i exist or not i am do you feel i am or do you feel i am not we all the time feel i am no in the state of deep sleep also we feel i am when we woke up without dreams or after dream state we go into deep sleep people call it power nap and we wake up i am not aware of the body i am not aware of my emotions i am not aware of my thoughts but i still am i still exist what is that i am and that i am will never become i am not even if body dies i will not die even if the emotions change i will not change even if the thoughts come and go i am the witness of thoughts coming and going so who is the witness of these thoughts who doesn't change that changeless entity is god in us that's experience even right now just that our attention is not on that our attention is on something else so we feel i don't experience god so the thought of god can change the thought of god can even disappear like you said but god by itself cannot disappear because god is not a thought if god was a thought then definitely there is no use of pursuing god 100% because anything that is perishable 
Why will I pursue that? Is anyway going to change? So that's why these things need little more thinking, and it will be nice to have this inquiry: that who is this God? People may create any concepts of God, but God is not limited by that. God is infinite, and that's why our scriptures will also tell you that any name, any form, is a means to quieten the mind. Once you quieten the mind, you drop the name and form, because you cannot. confine god to any specific name and form it's impossible so if you say krishna alone is god <laughs> for having shraddha that this is the form of bhagwan that i am worshiping so that i feel my mind is strong and my mind can become quiet it is a great method there no doubt but if you say krishna alone is god and nothing else is god not acceptable our culture will say go beyond the form of krishna krishna is consciousness in each one of us so that's why spirituality even when we say i am spiritual not religious many people don't have even that much clarity of basic spirituality itself when people think about god think about the self so these are things that we have to think about by ourselves and understand what do they really mean when they say these things because otherwise popular narrative they go on happily so we come back to our discussions we were on this question yesterday about india now one aspect is if we have to become transformed as a country we want to evolve we want to achieve great things as a country what is the most fundamental unit in a country what makes up the country in that what is the most fundamental unit the people wonderful if people don't change can the country change if one person changes can the country change one person's change can the country change or not okay how many say yes okay so if one person changes country changes do you believe that country changes with the only that small little effect of that one person or country can change more right no so the question is if he yeah so that's fine whichever way it changes my question is some people said that one person changing cannot change the country is that because the presumption is that others may not choose to be influenced and may not choose to follow that's why or do you think that one person is too insignificant to make a change in the nation level is a person is an individual one individual too insignificant to make a change in the nation or is it possible that one person can create a massive impact ha is is time a necessity that it will take a lot of time <laughs> it can be exactly it can be instant thing as well variable factors are there some take time and make an influence some make instantly some do on a sustained basis some just make an influence and disappear both positively negatively all that the pop the reason why i am saying this is many times organizations or even a whole country does not change because the people think mere karne se kya hoga just because i change how does it matter how does the country change i may change myself my thought process but you know the system is too powerful uh, we can't fight against the system so lot of these thoughts will be there in our minds but if you see great achievers against all odds they will achieve success 
because they have that kind of inner belief they have that kind of confidence in themselves in the goal that they have dedication that they have so when we see the lives of these people there is one thing that we find very common in all of them and that is the the strength that comes to them from their higher vision so if each one develops that capability that person can make a big difference gurudev when he was told when he asked his master that tapon maharaj that i want to go down and teach tapon maharaj said don't go down you will get caught in the cycle of karma whoever wants knowledge will come to you 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 be here in the himalayas but gurudev said my urge to share this knowledge is irresistible like mother ganga flows from the mountains to the plains serving millions of people i want to serve because lack of the knowledge of vedant my countrymen are suffering they don't know the glory of their culture they don't know the beauty of the practices that they are doing so i want to take it to the people when he came to pune he gave a talk in a hindu temple a hindu swami talking to a hindu audience and the topic he gave is let us be hindus there were five people for his first talk think about it if you have to leave himalayas you have to leave your own gurus presence you have to leave ganga ji you have to leave the peace there and you come into the hustle and bustle of the city life you don't know the people absolutely you don't know where you will be living you don't know from where your food will come you are not a person who is earning money you are not a professional you have difficulties after that first talk where you have only five people what would be the thought process i think my guru was right let me go back <laughs> but he said no in next 10 days he said i will conduct a 100 days yagna 23 december 1951 he gave the first talk and then 31st december he started he said 100 days program we will do he had that faith and one person today because of whom you and i are sitting here he of course influenced inspired people then the team became bigger and bigger but one person's faith and you know orthodoxy at that time he was giving this knowledge in english and to everybody irrespective of caste creed community gender nationality he was giving this knowledge free to all some orthodox people cursed him also they wrote letters to him they said we curse you that your tongue be blasted in thousand pieces you are giving this lang- knowledge in english language foreigners language and you are giving it to non brahmins what you are doing is a big disservice so much opposition but gurudev stuck to his vision he wanted to give this knowledge to people and today we are one person built this whole huge thing and it, it, the vision continues same way the tata family think about it jamshed ji tata started the steel industries and british times he was not allowed into the hotel and what was the board that time there indians and dogs not allowed he could have reacted he could have fought his way in he could have done anything he said okay his response was fantastic he created what taj group of hotels and today so many foreigners come and stay there <laughs> many examples like that of individuals who have transformed one you know jhansi ki rani there is a look alike of jhansi ki rani do you know who was that jhalkari bai she is exact look alike of jhansi ki rani and jhansi ki rani tricked the british where jhalkari bai sacrificed herself and jhansi ki rani left to fight at other front and massive contribution two women they didn't think that you know what will happen to us british forces are larger than ours nothing yesterday you saw that video na for 75 uh, facts about india varghese kurian so much work he did to bring about his white revolution 
one person like that so many people's examples you can take that how one person transforms and the whole nation transforms so that's why we had the movement called transforming indians to transform india yesterday ankita taught you something right when she said i transform what do you say jor se you feel it and say i transform india transform you transform india transform we transform india transform bharat mata ki jai that faith one must have that we can be each one can be a massive agent of change to do that we must anchor ourselves well in spiritual knowledge so that is where we will enter today into the gita do you believe arjun was a good person you had a question So good question point number 1 is to understand that british what they did to us na to our education system that we have to understand <clears throat> special subsidies scholarships were given to people to sanskrit to study english and sanskrit was systematically removed from our curriculum the mindset at that time was you must learn english one two if you want to reach the elite educated class you have to speak only in english across the country if you speak in one language you can cater only to certain sections of people Tamil can speak. You can speak only to Tamilians. Malayalam, you can speak only to Malayalis. Beyond that, you can't do. And Hindi, yes, he could have spoken, but he was not very familiar and fluent in Hindi that much. Though it is very interesting, Tapon Maharaj taught him in Hindi, and Guru Dev used to listen to Tapon Maharaj in Hindi, make his notes in English. <laughs> If you look at his books, his notes are all in English. and now and then he would speak some hindi words in the talk also kunti ka bete and all that he will say in his talks but he is not very fluent he was a student of english literature he himself was a part of that he he was a what you say you know he himself has gone through what the british have done that he was not familiar with the glory of indian culture the depth of it plus he knew lot of things about foreigners and he always wanted to belong to the elite class he went through all that and he saw the limitations of it then he said if i have to reach the uh, elite class today i have to speak only in english if i speak in sanskrit i can't reach this elite class and the reason to reach this elite class is these are the people who are going into administration in the government who are going into all the top positions and the people who are at the bottom they look up to such people so you need to have bottom uh, top down approach and bottoms up approach both and also one fact we have to understand here is as you said lot of people didn't know english at that time so do you know many people used to come to gurudev's talks not for spirituality or understanding gita to learn and improve their english so many used to come and gurudev knew that this language has its limitation and i need to penetrate the heart of the country i must go in different languages that's why he started sidbari here the course has happening in hindi you know in tamil nadu he started in coimbatore to train brahmacharis in tamil in kerala he started that in ernakulam to do in malayalam in maharashtra in kolhapur to do it the course in marathi in karnataka in uh, uh, chokkahalli to treat teach people in kannada so he started because he knew that this is the vision but when he alone started he would always start from his strength that is another point to understand for a leader if you operate from strength you can expand the team and then slowly slowly the vision that you have the team can take up and he was a master in english literature so he spoke in english 
also important to understand is english today is a means of communication globally we cannot call it only as a foreigners language today is not possible you know for how many decades china and japan they would not speak in english they would only have translators they will speak only in their language for a long time even in the what you call the political uh, events and those uh, bureaucracy you know the bureaucrats talk to each other like that even in that they used to have translators but slowly slowly they had to change today they have learned english they need to speak because if you want to live in this global world english is a means of communication but that does not mean we forget our native language our mother tongue the problem with us is that's where we are heading how many of you speak your mother tongue at your home good please continue is very important so many homes i see today parents and children talk only in english and now when then some native mother tongue language words they will speak how many of you know to read your mother tongue see the numbers go down <laughs> how many of you know to write in your mother tongue one should learn your mother tongue you should know to read and write so much literature opens up plus it's your mother tongue we should know about it at least do that when you go back start learning learn your mother tongue speak in your mother tongue read write and even from your brain standpoint it is very good alzheimers people who get alzheimers and all of that no so one of the methods to use your brain especially as you grow older is to learn language learn a new language and we are very happy to learn french and german and you know all those other languages no problem learn those but don't miss out on your mother tongue that's very crucial so coming back to this aspect about the gita i was asking you about arjun so do you believe arjun was a hard working person was he skillful was he uh, value oriented would was he following good values was he a successful person yes did he prepare himself for the war no what did he do 12 years in the forest he took na divyastra and all that so he prepared na he may not have prepared fully my question was not that he prepared himself fully for the war but did he prepare or not that's what i'm saying he may not have prepared himself fully but did he prepare or not that was the basic question ha huh, so he did so now think about it a person who is hard working a person who is efficient a person who is skillful a person who is value oriented a person who is good all this and yet what happened to him in the battlefield just before the war has to start what happens to him crumbles breaks down can't stand shivering sweating bow falls from his hand he has tears in his eyes he comes down from the chariot he is at the feet of shri krishna completely dejected depressed despondent and what is his conclusion i don't want to fight i will go to the forest that is called arjun disease many times we get it or not arjun disease just before your marriage also arjun disease am i taking the right decision should i marry am i getting bound i don't think i want to commit myself for whole life and with one person i have to live whole life oh my god that's too much how can you spend one life whole lifetime with only one person what they call marriage jitters commitment issues so many challenges arjun disease and suddenly you run away also there are so many movies nowadays which are coming like that popular fellows run away from their own marriage they'll run away that day of the marriage only they'll run away and and interview you have to go to again tension studied so many things 
prepared well for the interview did coaching and all that but still tension we like career what will they ask in the interview all that entrance exam cat mat gat whatever i don't know so many tension for that exam gurudev used to say before the exam the student is wise after the exam the student is equally wise in the exam the student is otherwise <laughs> suddenly some questions you read i don't know the answer of these two and the chapter which you omitted that chapter only questions will come from then you will be like oh god my dream to get this percentage gone shattered and then you lose even that much memory that you have of all the other answers you forget and then what does one do this is this this what is this called you know in in this sanskrit in yoga hello this this is called hasta murdha scratch asan <laughs> they go on scratching this as though the answer will come from here and then you give the paper also and after that what happens the moment you hand over the paper then oh god this was the answer it didn't strike at that time huh while you are doing the scratch yoga it didn't strike then it strikes why because when you are in tension then the mind can't think then you do anything but when the mind relaxes then you can achieve success so what happened to arjun in the gita was that before the gita he was absolutely dejected depressed despondent he is like any of us arjun is a symbol of all of us he is a dynamic man of action and he collapsed why did he collapse there though he was killed was he scared of fighting the war was he scared of losing what was his issue family was family his issue fighting against family is that issue yeah he didn't want to face the outcome of the war so what did he do tell me in the 13th year of his exile just the day when it ended there was a war in the kingdom of virat did arjun win that war or lose the war did he win it alone or there were lot of army with him alone na so he knows that he can fight all of them he knows he has already defeated all of them once single handedly and the outcome of this war why will he be scared of the outcome so he is he afraid of family is he afraid of fighting is he afraid of outcome is he really afraid of side effects any war any war will have terrible side effects does he not know as a kshatriya uh, why there is after that you have to re establish the whole kingdom again there is so much more to do one minute one by one yeah then why did he prepare for 12 years if it was existential at that moment think about it we may think that way but there was something else that actually made him collapse very different thing yeah hey man oh boss no 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 definitely not that because they 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 were ready to adjust but then the war was thrust upon them so where is life going on well for them think about it 
they have finished the exile their kingdom has been taken away from them and the war is being thrust on them they are completely on the receiving side of victiming victi they are the victims actually you know they didn't want to make a noise because they didn't want to create destruction so they said we don't want a kingdom you give us five villages that's more than enough we don't want anything so they didn't want to create uh, destroy lives you know so that is one aspect he is afraid of fighting his own gurus as i said did he not fight dronacharya in the war in the birat war he defeated na dronacharya so fighting gurus is not an issue yeah there No, but fighting is not a problem. That's what I'm saying. He to fought with Bhishma and Drona and defeated them in the thirteenth year of exile. So he's when in thirteenth year, or he was helpless there in the war. In the thirteenth year of after exile, he fought na Bhishma, Drona, all of them. The entire Kaurava army came there to expose the Pandavas and uh, make them go into exile again for thirteen years. There. alone he fought with that uttar kumar who was his charioteer he fought alone arjun fought alone and he defeated all of them so fighting with the gurus or grandfather is not the issue attachment to attachment to losing his people in any war he will lose na in any war you will lose people so maybe yes mass destruction is one reasoning he gives no doubt in that that's what uh, somebody else said here also the outcome of the war in terms of the destruction it will cause maybe but is that the primary reason we have to come to the primary reason why he gave up sorry guilt guilt no akshatriya will not have guilt after fighting so many wars so much battle why he may express that you know how can i enjoy the pleasure stained by the blood of my own relatives so that is one argument he gives but the cause is something else yeah afraid to lose lose the war no no not afraid to lose the war he knows that he can win the war and with krishna him to with him to there is no question about it he will win Yeah, but so that's what they tried peace first. That's the reason why they tried peace first, na? They sent Krishna as a messenger. Before Krishna, another person also had gone. Krishna was the second time he went. So they tried peace a lot, but Duryodhan thrust the war upon them, saying that not even the land occupied by a pin I will give without war. These are the words in Mahabharat. So now they are Kshatriyas. War is thrust upon them. Now they have to defend. so the reason the main reason is not that yeah so if dharma rules has to rule the world then arjun has to fight arjun can't say let dharma rule the world so i am going to forest उल्टा होगा ना वो तो इफ धर्म हैज टू रूल द वर्ल्ड एंड अर्जुन हैज टू फाइट यू कैन नॉट डू उल्टा देन बिकॉज पांडवास वॉन्ट विन इफ अर्जुन गोस अवे इन टू द फॉरेस्ट डू यू नो वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इन महाभारत इज दिस सो दैट ही रोट धृतराष्ट्र रोट अ लेटर टू अर्जुन एंड सेंट इट थ्रू संजय एंड मेड अर्जुन साइकोलॉजिकली वीक saying that how will you fight your own people do you have no shame and how will you enjoy this so dhritarashtra's arguments is what arjun tells in first chapter of the gita that is how he got influenced but what was the main reason is what we are searching for parasaran you have lifted your hand yeah
so tell me was kurukshetra the war in kurukshetra was it for the personal property was it a land dispute was it a kingdom dispute did they fight did pandavas fight for their kingdom the what did they fight for as so indra prasthi their kingdom only na they fought because duryodhan violated agreement terms so was it a breach of contract <laughs> so both he saying so breach of contract regarding the property <laughs> ah those are accumulated reasons then then you want to take revenge for draupadi's insult and all that but tell me was it really that if it was really that why would they send krishna as a peace messenger if they want land and they want kingdom why will they send krishna as a peace messenger number 1 why will they i just saying we don't want the kingdom you give us just five villages arjun didn't fight for land or for kingdom or for uh, you know breach of contract he didn't fight for that yeah the internal conflict was there mind and intellect has the intellect knows he has to fight the mind doesn't want to fight we are asking the cause that why that split in mind intellect happened okay last one that's the question why emotional breakdown he had an emotional breakdown but why what was the reason pressure to was there on duryodhan also on bhim also everybody was in pressure situation na why alone arjun collapses <laughs> that what you said just now he has to kill what ha that is the main point he doesn't have to defeat people see him fighting bhishma and drona is not a problem him defeating bhishma and drona is not a problem he knows very well this is a battle where i have to kill my teacher and my grandfather and the other people that killing is the issue not defeating defeating he can do this time it was not a question of defeating this time is a question of killing finished sorry see he has to kill because now you have to understand i was saying one interesting fact then i stopped in the side of kauravas they had 11 akshavini army and pandavas had only seven okay and look at the kaurava side how many people bhishma he will die when he wants to die <laughs> he has ichha mrityu vardhan nobody can kill him dronacharya he has taught everyone so he, nobody can defeat him by himself by itself then kripacharya is already immortal karna has a special not kavach he had a indra shakti kavach he gave away he got that shakti vajra from that indra he got that thunderbolt special one duryodhan duryodhan he has learned under balram uh, the mace fighting that gandhari's power comes to him later every yeah every ashwatthama has that money every fellow there in kaurava side has some special boon on pandava side what they have only arjun has pashupat astra nobody else has any special boons okay so if pandavas have to win the war and once and for all settle this issue of dharma and adharma there is no other choice for them except you have to kill bhishma and drona and rest of the gang there until you don't do that you will not win that is what led to his collapse and that's i am not saying this it's said in the gita you read the first chapter so many arguments he gives in the first chapter then he says i don't want to fight and he collapses and finally in the second chapter he surrenders to shri krishna there he says 
हाउ कैन आई इवन फाइट दिस पीपल Bhishma and Drona, they are worthy of respect even through words. I cannot insult them through even speech. You expect me to fight and kill them? How is that possible, Krishna? I cannot do that. I give up. So all his justifications are external, other reasons. The primary reason is his attachment to Bhishma and Drona, and he has to kill them. Nobody else will be able to do that. That is what made him collapse. that is what the emotional pressure is so we know that emotionally he got disturbed but why he got disturbed we have to understand a skillful person a very hard working person got disturbed because of this and did krishna change anything in the world outside did he tell duryodhan that come on here this guy is feeling very low you know let's not have the war have some out of court settlement <laughs> nothing he didn't do anything he gave the knowledge to bhagwa uh, to arjun and what happened that same arjun after the knowledge of geeta is given that dejected depressed despondent arjun what happens to him he becomes courageous picks up his bow ready to do his duty goes ahead and wins the war why because emotionally he got empowered spiritually he got anchored these are two things we should remember always if we get spiritually anchored the greatest tragedies and difficulties of life we can go through with balance and with strength and emotionally we should learn to have that equanimity